the last webinar, we talked about sustainability standards. Today, food safety standards as one part of quality and standards that we want to promote in the value chain. And this uh, with two objectives in general. On the one hand, food safety standards are key for consumer protection and consumer health. And on the other hand, we expect that the introduction of food safety standards improves the competitiveness, market access and income of the value chain actors. For food safety, there are regulatory standards existing which provide a minimum base. These are, for example, food laws, either on national or on regional level, as is, for example, for the European Union. All actors in food value chains have to establish a quality management system. The food industry uh, sets also or has set voluntary standards, uh, which create then additional requirements. The critical components are, to my understanding, combined in the so-called quality infrastructure, uh, which includes uh, calibration laboratories, testing laboratories, inspection bodies and certification bodies. Typical interventions of projects are particularly in addressing to improve the quality infrastructure. The critical issue is uh, capacity development, uh, which is uh, then an entry point for value chain promotion. This can either be in improving food safety at the level of the food producers uh, or traders, and a second part could be the improving or should, should be the improving of the standard management system. That means uh, the installation of an effective and efficient quality infrastructure. I think we have seen the relevance of introducing food safety standards as company level, mandatory or voluntary standards, and on the other side also how to improve the standard system. But we continue with our example from Kyrgyzstan. Very important that the uh, legal uh, framework regulation are not contradicting to each other in the country or, or harmonized with international requirements. And our project is uh, focusing on uh, increasing capacity of laboratory staff, uh, uh, inspectors, uh, help uh, private sector implement HASP system, work on traceability. A lot of uh, international organizations train experts, but uh, without uh, practical experience, they are not becoming a full, uh, let's say, practitioners. We have selected 17 students who are nearly to become an expert on food safety. Uh, we pilot uh, developing of traceability system for plum value chain. We tested it and we show that the private companies can uh, develop own traceability system and use it uh, to prove that it is controlling each step of production and processing of the production process. Uh, the companies whom we help to certify, uh, they are still keep their markets in Russia and Kazakhstan. So it means that uh, in our cases, maybe in cases of your countries as well, um, companies implementing and uh, uh, getting certification for such a higher standards only if the buyer is requested it. And for the local markets, they are not so much, uh, let's say, um, yeah, pay attention. After joining Eurasian Economic Union, uh, a lot of funds came for, uh, from Russia to equip our laboratory. But uh, we still don't have a staff who can... Um, handle it. Food supervision is divided between two inspections, veterinary inspection and sanitary inspection. So it was very important that uh, this inspection can now check and uh, supervise HASP system because uh, HASP system in our country is mandatory to implement but not necessary to certify it. And then the inspection inspections, they are they are the main bodies who prove uh, existence or who prove the implementation of HASP system at comp company level. We develop risk-based supervision, uh, develop checklist, and then uh, uh, we help them to assess a companies and classify them by risk. 
uh, yeah, and if the company is doing uh, good and if there is uh, no any non-compliance, that uh, the number of inspection can be decreased. So it also depends on the risk level. For instance, if it's company uh, of uh, processing products of animal origin, it, it's risky. But uh, anyway, uh, the results of inspection will be taken into account. Uh, in our country, the processing company believes that HASP is mandatory only if he wants to export. We don't have a certification body who can uh, certify international standards like ISO, and uh, we invite this uh, from uh, other countries. Training uh, bottlenecks in uh, official control, so uh, on food inspectors. Uh, here is, uh, as I said, uh, the supervision is divided between two inspections, veterinarian and sanitarian. And also there is no clear uh, kind of division of responsibilities between them. And you can see even uh, a competition between this inspection. But I have to say that as veterinarian inspection is under the Ministry of Health and the capacity of veterinarian inspection is higher let's say, they are, because all of them are from uh, medical university and they are more advanced. But um, sanitarian inspection checking only processing companies. So it's almost end uh, of the end product. We still don't have a general law on food safety. So there is uh, two options that we don't need any law on food safety that uh, it's enough to use only this uh, regulation from Eurasian Economic Union. But uh, Eurasian Economic Union gives only like kind of general things and all the nitty gritties should be done within national legislation. This work is still kind of in stock. Lack of effective state control system for food operators. Here, uh, uh, State control system is only uh, with processing companies and uh, all the burden on food safety is on the shoulder of processing companies. But the farmers, they are kind of uh, not covered by official control unless the food safety should be like uh, equally shared with all operators. Our government now, here I want to say a few words, uh, wants to make a digital uh, e-governance and put a lot of efforts in this sphere. Interesting to see how HACCP principles also become mandatory in the Eurasian Economic Union and a very good mix of um, qualification of the companies and also improvement of the framework conditions like better laboratory services and better inspection which leads to less burden for the companies. Um, so, um, STDF, um, what is it and um, what kind of role is STDF playing for services improvement? Basically, STDF provides funding in the sector of food safety value chains. Mm -hmm. And um, you can apply for fundings either for a project preparation grant or you can provide up to one million funding for a project grant. And the GIZ on Germany is one of the donors of the STDF and um, is represented by the German Ministry of Food and Agriculture. And the GIZ is observing and also advising the BML in Geneva at the STDF working group. If there is a, a value chain development project that is working on food safety standards or other standards um, that is coming to an end, that could also be an, a possibility. If there is really a good project which needs a dis additional funding or, for example, if GIZ colleagues all over the world have a um, good partner and that partner would like to create Aid somehow a food safety project, but GIZ in that country has no additional funding for that. Please contact me. I can link our colleagues to the STDF and we might write together a project grant or a project preparation. 
We are now switching from Central Asia to uh, the hot Accra, I think. Um, Richard Niomua from uh, Moab. I think Moab is working on introducing global gap certification in Ghana. Can you tell us what exactly you are doing there? At the agricultural level or the farm level, one of the standards that we consider very important is the global gap standard. And so in the global gap standards, we have two front approach. We train local consultants that will be able to help the private sector to implement the requirements of the standards. So we use global gap training facilities to train local consultants. Currently, we have about five or so consultants that we've trained. Some of them are now uh, farm assurers that are helping the industry. Then for the value chains that we operate, where an optica being a fresh exporter or a processor require the suppliers, which are farmers, to be certified to global gap, we go in to support. We provide both technical support and depending on the farm, the FGI is an FBO, farmer-based organization that are not very rich or do not have the necessary funding. Then we also provide them with some funding to pay for the cost of the certification. When we provide funding, then we do it in a reducing level. So maybe in the first year, we pay 80%. Second year, we pay maybe 50%. The third year, then we try to withdraw so that the farmers will also do sustainability in their application. So we help them to be able to have some sort of fundraising to be able to sustain the renewal of their certificates. And how are the farmers um, taking this initiative? So the, the, the larger farm farmers who usually will go for option one are taking on full cost of the certification process. If we need to support, we send a consultant and we bear part of the consultant's cost to help prepare these farmers when they don't have internal resources. For small scale farmers that come, smallholder farmers that form a group, that goes for option two. Um, in the first phase, yes, we provide financial support. We've been doing this over the years. Currently, we have some farmers that we have win of financial support and they have by themselves be able to renew their certificates for the past two, three years without our financial support. We sometimes go in to monitor to see what they are doing and whether they are on the right course and provide some technical services or technical assistance where necessary. So yes, for most of the farmers that we work with, um, when they have sustained market, they are able to renew their certificates probably after the third year of support. Moab also introduced some kind of new standard in Ghana. If I'm correct, then it's something like Ghana Green Label. For the farm level, um, there is actually no standard that has been enforced by any national agency. So we try to do what we call the local version of the global gap, if you want to call it that way. So we simplify the global gap into a standard the requirements of the global gap into a local standard we call the Ghana Green Label. Because GIZ or MWAP is a project that is a bilateral project that is working with the Ministry of Food and Agriculture in Ghana, this standard was first developed with the Food and Agriculture, Ministry of Food and, Food and Agriculture with the assistance of the Ghana Standards Authority. How is it managed, the standard? So even though we developed a standard through the Ministry of Food and Agriculture, we try to make the standards uh, have a private focus. So we assist the value chain access to register for a company, a, a company guaranteed by trust. So we call it the Green Label Foundation. And so the Green Level Foundation then becomes what we call a PPP, a private public partnership. It has a governing body that comprises people from ministry, but uh, about 60% of people from the private sector. And it tries to look at people from all levels of the value chain within the private sector. So you have farmers, you have uh, off-takers, you have some processors, some uh, restaurants and retailers who are serving on the governing body. And then in the court for the certification onto the standards, what the foundation has done is to hire a secretariat and a manager that is managing it 
independently. And the auditing aspect has been outsourced to internationally accredited certification bodies registered here in Ghana. So they apply to become auditors for the standard. And so they belong to, they have a platform once somebody requires it, then you are given the option as to which of these uh, accredited certification bodies you are allowed to use for the audits. I could see some similarities between the two projects where on, in, in both cases you are working directly with the companies on the certification and on the other side you are improving the system by um, better uh, services for certification, by better legislation, by introduction of new local standards that are more adapted for use in the country. We also have implementation of standards at the processor or packhouse level. So we also support these people, um, basic HACCP, but uh, looking at also ISO 22000 and BRC. If the company doesn't have the internal capacity, then we hire consultants who go in there to support the company to implement the requirements of these standards. What we've also done is that uh, GIZ organized a training workshop for ECOWAS on quality management system, looking at the ISO standards. What would you expect to be said in the general food safety policy of Kyrgyzstan? And is it correct that the Eurasian Economic Union sets regulations which so far are not set by the national laws. Responsibility is divided between Minister of Economy, Minister of Health and Minister of Agriculture. Uh, there is uh, no kind of responsibility taking. So maybe uh, it would be good if uh, on state, on a very political level, it clearly says that uh, the main coordination role is given to one. Because we also have to see that uh, we are close to uh, China. Second question to Andrea, that uh, so far that EU sets regulation uh, which are not set by the national laws. Yes, uh, in Eurasian economic technical regulation, you can find like... Uh, Traceability should be in place, but it doesn't give any, any kind of schemes or patterns or whatever. And uh, as I mentioned before, no clear rules of game. If our company sets uh, own a traceability system and in the border, for instance, we have a lot of um, kind of problem with Kazakhstan, they can say, no, we don't accept your traceability system because it is not according to our understanding. So uh, it means that uh, within Eurasian Economic Union, it should be said that uh, the companies should have traceability system based on international requirements or Codex Alimentarius. So it would be good to develop one and then just uh, use, all others can use it. I was happy to hear from you that in the Eurasian Union, you also work based on HACCP principles. So that should then be the relative or the relevant framework worldwide or in, in most countries. What measures have been successful so far to alleviate those bottlenecks? There were so many international donors and organizations. They pay for all the services. And then all the experts became donor-driven. We have uh, capacitated about 10 experts who are, no, who are now really uh, uh, well known. Uh, and these uh, experts, they're starting to uh, create their own small consulting companies who are dealing not only with food safety issues, but also providing the whole uh, range of uh, export import consultancy. Uh, with the laboratory, if the staff is leaving the laboratory, then the accreditation also can be withdrawn. So now the state labs, they started to um, increase the salary. That's good. These were many very interesting points, and uh, I would like to underline a few of them. You started uh, talking about uh, that many projects are donor-driven um, about food safety standards. I think the main issue is really that there has to be a clear requirement from the market. 
so that um, it's, it's just necessary for the companies to fulfill the food safety standards and uh, only then the donors should come in. On the other side, what you said in, regarding the necessary good qualification of national experts on food safety and certification. Um, yes, definitely. And I think uh, like what you are doing and what other countries are doing, um, I think this is a very important area of, of capacity building where the projects can make a very good contribution. And uh, I was last year in Armenia and Georgia, and I was surprised uh, about the quality of national consultants on certification and food safety. And uh, if these consultants are available in the country, I think that's already a very good advantage. Uh, Armenia and uh, Georgia, yes, they feel um, okay, or they are at least uh, interested uh, to export uh, to the EU market, yeah, where they feel the pressure. And I think that is one thing uh, which is uh, still, I don't know, maybe lacking in, um, in Kyrgyzstan, uh, that uh, the companies are not yet feeling that pressure, that uh, their export market uh, is no longer available. PESIP is mandatory in the EU, Eurasian Economic Union, including Russia. Sometimes there's a big difference between what's the case on paper and what's the case in reality. If in the long term a country really wants to work more towards export, there is a strong driver to do something and to improve uh, quality controls. And I think, as Naskul said, a coordinating authority is really a very important um, part of it. Uh, I also think that apart from uh, private, uh, sorry, from, from sort of state authorities, some of the inspection may need to be uh, delegated uh, even to private companies, of course, under the supervision possibly of, of state authorities. My question to Naskul is, are the requirements for goods uh, if I want to export from Kyrgyzstan to EU or Russia or China, um, do they differ greatly so that also um, some sort of harmonization of standards is necessary? With uh, Russia, we should follow the technical regulation, so requirements of Eurasian Economic Union. Uh, th mm -hmm. There should be husband place and all the um, requirements prescribed in technical regulation. With China, it's it is more difficult, you know, uh, you, you can easily uh, buy something from China, but it's very difficult to sell something to China. With some countries, it's not really a sanitary problem uh, or phytosanitary problem. It is rather a political problem. Um, so like a political barrier of trade, I would say. Uh, so, but uh, Naskul can uh, confirm or, or not confirm this. Yeah, but I also, when I was in Kenya, I heard about certain um, decisions on political level, say within the East African community. Uh, nevertheless, uh, trade was, uh, was impossible on something uh, or also now with the crim we have the sanctions mm. yeah so um uh, i guess apart from from standards technical standards um we also have political considerations when trade is happening and mm. yeah uh, sometimes it's a bit difficult to um to differentiate possibly what is behind the move if you can import or, or, or export or not. The World Trade Organization put SPS measures, so sanitary and phytosanitary measures, um, as um, a possibility of uh, non-trade uh, uh, barriers 
which I accepted. But everything what goes beyond these sanitary and phytosanitary measures are actually a case then uh, for uh, non um, uh, barriers, non tariff barriers, uh, which uh, can be uh, reported to WTO. Sometimes the customs officers uh, are quite happy if the regulations are not very clear, because if it's not clear, um, there are a lot of issues to argue about and uh, to um, understand this way or that way. I found it very interesting that in all cases that we discussed, HESIP is really the basic requirement that we first have to address. And from a practical perspective for projects, I think it's possible in a first year of qualifying and training companies just to focus on the basic HESIP principles and HESIP training. And after some time of HESIP training and uh, realizing HESIP principles in the companies, then the companies can choose depending on the requirements of the individual uh, customers they have whether to go for one certification or the other, whether they go for ISO 22000 or Global Gap or FSSC 22000 or BRC, HACCP principles or the application of a quality management system based on HACCP principles is a mandatory requirement in the European Union and as we now saw also in the Eurasian Economic Union, but it doesn't mean that the companies need to be certified according to HACCP. Companies just have to be able to prove and show that they have a quality management system according to HACCP in place. So just as a, as a comment, basic training on HACCP and then we can go for food safety certification. HACCP, uh, current, the way the principles are structured and the way they are implemented are more tailored towards processes and uh, pack houses. Mm -hmm. And so it is important that when you are looking at the farm-based standards, which includes the global gap and any of the sustainable standards at the farm level, the principles are interpreted properly so that it fits well mm -hmm. into the operations of the farmers. Otherwise, they may not appreciate it because of the way the principles are currently uh, structured and being taught and written in, in, in test books and in, in articles. The PVB is good an area that needs to be looked at because all the farm-based standards actually refer to operating according to the principles of HACCP, but it's important that the HACCP is, is tilted towards agriculture and good agricultural practices at the farm-based level. Thanks and goodbye. Have a great day.